Hello, Beto. Thanks for joining us today to talk about 510 Jazz's newest song, Crossing the Sea, which drops on September the 16th. And we're delighted that you've joined us on the song. So um, when I think about you, I think we met five years ago on the WJMX Smooth Jazz Boston chat room. Those were exactly. some really fun broadcasts. And I remember <laughs> Jeff Moses had this great big chat room with dozens of musicians. And I think uh, that's when I first uh, started texting with you and we learned about what each other was doing. Those were fun times, right? Yeah, those were really fun times. And, and it was a surprise. We had a lot of things in common. Yeah. Also with Jeff, yeah, Jeff Moses. Uh, I'm coming from the Philippines, and he has got lots of connections with with where I come from, and also oh. with with you, right? So uh, I, I I can't exactly remember how Jeff was familiar with with the Philippines. Yeah, um, yeah, but but those were really great times in the yeah. jazz. Yeah, and we were doing, or uh, I think it, uh, it was uh, one of our tracks made it there. Uh huh. Uh, we, yeah, we did Black Coffee. Oh my God! And, yeah, yeah. Nancy uh, Brew, just Nancy I, Brew. <laughs> I just love your artist Nancy Brew, and but I especially love the prowess that you have with acoustic and electric guitars. So I thought I'd ask you a few questions here today. Sure, um, sure first man. of all, can you tell us uh, a, just a little bit about your journey as a guitarist, where you started? Okay. All right, right. Um, well, as as a guitar player, um, well, music was basically in the family. So both both my parents were from the same orchestra that was post war. And around like 1943, it was so. Yeah, my father was a guitar player, and my mom was singing. But I got into guitar. I don't know if you would take this seriously. I got into the guitar later part of my life. Wow. I just wanted to draw, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I draw, drawing was my first love. So uh, I would, uh, I would uh, draw here and there. Greatly influenced by you know comic books. Mm -hmm. Bronze mm -hmm. Age comic books and, and all of this stuff in the 70s. But then guitar came in later because the guitar was there, but it, I never had a, uh, an affinity for that because mm -hmm. uh, I saw it every day with my dad. And I thought that, that, was, that, was, a, that was a dad tool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a dad okay. tool. Okay, so yeah. hands off the guitar, you know, he would, he would work and play at night. Wow. And, but then I was, uh, me and my sister, we were, because music was in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, well, subconsciously, we were exposed to a lot of music, yeah. um, a lot of music growing up in that era. I was born in the 70s, 75. So 75 was, uh, well, the peak of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you prog rock, rock jazz, everything yeah. happening, Bossa Nova. Uh, there was a lot of Brazilian thing. There was a lot of yeah. things creeping in in pop music at that time. So subconsciously, I was listening to a lot of stuff. And when I started to like, play the guitar um it came in naturally a self-taught happened my dad never wow. taught me anything self-taught <laughs> oh my yeah, god my dad never taught me anything <laughs> wow yeah because he wasn't much of a teacher he was more of a uh -huh. performer right yeah yeah so, yeah but 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 the things that he was playing in the house uh -huh. I, I don't know john you, you you know at five i was listening to Return to Forever, Blood, Sweat, really? and Tears. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, that stuff! I was That's born, amazing. Uh, yeah, and as I was, uh, I was in grade school. I remember 1980 clearly. Uh -huh. We wore the tape out, tape, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the cassette tapes. Oh my god! I still, yeah, yeah, I still have a copy yeah. up to my loft there. Uh, this time by Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau, yeah, really? Yeah, that that whole album. So, yeah. So when I started picking up the guitar. I, I had this this initial template of what it should sound like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So I was drawn more to that. But also surprisingly, as, as we're talking, this is as random as it gets, John. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, People like to I, hear that kind of stuff. <laughs> all I really wanted was to learn how to play guitar, play a few mm -hmm. songs from America. Oh when the gosh. chores are done, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, get get some yeah. some some songs under the tree or wherever, just just a little downtime. But then eventually it evolved. I started hearing things, and then I played. I didn't have a guitar at, at hand, so I had to borrow a lot because, as I was saying, uh -huh. the guitar was dad's tool, so I was yeah. off limits there, right? Wow. So yeah, so I would steal and sneak in a few things, learn a few parts over there. At that at those times so that was the entry to the guitar wow that was your gateway drug and it's so so interesting yeah. that you're much of your life you've been a fine artist and then you became a performing artist later even though your dad 
yeah. was was a performing artist while you were a child but uh what a, what a story that's that's an amazing yeah, journey thank man. you thank you thank <laughs> you <laughs> so i was um wondering about as a you, you know as a composer myself um i wanted to imbue some of that classic bossa nova sound into the song and to mm -hmm. me that meant arranging arranging in a classical acoustic guitar, uh, reminiscent of those great songs from Joao Gilberto and so many others, you know, Herberto yes, Meniscal. Yes. Um, and so when I came up with that first melody, um, uh, it was melody first this time, which is, is sort of backwards for me. Usually I'll get a chord oh. progression lined up and then I'll compose the melody. But this time I composed the melody and then I arranged the chords in just, you know, following theory and um, to you know to provide the rhythm yeah. support, and then I handed that first chart over to you. But yeah, you ended yeah. up making some amazing, just truly foundational um, improvements in the rhythm. And I was wondering, uh, what can you talk a little bit about the challenges that you had with that first chart that I gave you? Oh yeah, when 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 you sent over that chart, okay, I was listening also to the melody because the melody was, you know, the the melody uh, was basically where. We were trying to, to put in the building mm -hmm. the harmony of it. And by the way, John, is that the first time that you did that? I mean, the other way around the process? Exactly. First time I did it the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that. Right, right. That's so <laughs> it, 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 and it was great that you handed me over a chart because like I can, well, I, I do read music. Um, not that fast, but yeah. uh, enough yeah. to save my life. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> enough to save uh, So as I was looking at that, and uh, it was a great help. It's a sent over the charts, the melody. So I was looking at there and was trying to build up the harmony, the best harmonies that you could come up mm -hmm. with um, from the, that, that pre-production stage, you know. Right. So as I was, it, it was, it was really challenging, but I had a lot of takeaway in this experience happened yeah. with you and with David and, and yeah. okay. If that was the first time for you to do that process, it was also the first time for me to do a mic. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'd like to thank, uh, give it up for David there for sending yeah. me over the references. You know, the, the great Mike King, uh, trying to come up with a decent guitar sound because I understood where you guys were coming from, looking for that soft um, nylon string vibe yeah. that's yeah. totally different, as you were saying, like you know, Bosco mm -hmm. or Oscar Castroneves. Yes, you know? Exactly. He's one <laughs> you know, of the greats. Yeah. You know, one of the greatest. So I was listening to that. And of course, um, uh, uh, interesting because, like Bossa Nova, I, I'm not sure if I'm I'm speaking for for everyone, or maybe it's just an observation. Mm -hmm. um, Bossa Nova in itself is really a beautiful thing on its own, even even though it it, it gets a profile together with jazz, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But Brazilian music in itself is such a beauty that it's it's a totally different language on your yeah. own. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. was, I, I really loved that challenge. So I want to get in. And when I sent, when I even sent the first demo, you know, you, you made yeah. your notes there. And I knew, I knew exactly what, what John was talking yeah, about. Yeah. Less of this, more of this, less of this, more of this. Wow. <laughs> right, right. So, well, I guess uh, the biggest challenge doing, laying down that track, actually, is because John, this is my studio. I'm under the stairs. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, yep. this is where I play. This is the mic I use. So I, I, re uh -huh. I recalled. I, I was, I was uh, bouncing off ideas with you and updating yeah. you. I say, I got to do it in the midnight, you know. Uh -huh. So I, it gets so squeaky, clean, uh -huh. quiet tonight. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was, I was, uh, at the end part of one track, one, one, one line that I was doing was so clean. Yeah. And I was so proud of that. I was about to end like two bars away from ending and the dog started barking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I had to go back oh and gosh. do it again, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it, it was great. So um, when I heard that one, you gave me the charts. I was really excited <clears throat> up, up for the challenge trying to come up with, with great harmonies. And by the yeah. way, I, I, I listened to that, that, that previous end. Amazing. Yeah. Great work, man. Oh, that, but it was just uh, such a blessing that you spent so much care um, in the whole harmonic foundation that you were talking about, because, yeah. you know, I was just using basic theory on producing, you know, chords that right. that followed the melody or, or you know, uh, complement the melody. But what you did, you know, brought really brought the vocal to life because you you developed these new chords that were har perfect harmonic um, matches for each of those uh melodic sections. So that was just brilliant. Did a great job. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and come to me, I'll be taking that as a compliment, you know? <laughs> Cause, yeah, because, um, um, well, this is actually, it, it, there's another first here as we, we convert. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that I work in collaboration with, with, well, I did a lot of collabs here also mm -hmm. with, with local artists, but from someone or for, from a group of people, like, you know, a, a, a plane right away. <laughs> this is a first <laughs> thing for me. You know? this, well, that's this is good. The first thing for me. So as I, I was really looking forward to it. And, and mm -hmm. when we started, you know, getting things going and rolling, um, this is also a, a great time for me. I, I was excited, looking forward to like really work on a professional track. And mm -hmm. um, for the longest time, it has been part of, of, uh, of my process. I always um, try to separate me, the, the guitarist, and me, the performer. And if, as just like you've asked for that, um, can you do some harmonic things over this one? Mm -hmm. I wasn't really thinking of guitar. I was thinking of the whole song, the whole band, you know? Right. Because, like, uh, uh, there's, there's always this stage... I don't know if this this is exclusive for guitarists, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, yeah. when you get when you get into a a guitar centric frame of mind, when you start to play just for guitar and then just for the solos and then just for that, but but uh, my my heroes, uh, I really uh, listen to a lot of great producers like Rick Beato, Quincy Jones, yeah, Quincy Jones, you know, wow. the uh, the guys, uh, Sergio Mendez, all these, Sergio Sergio Mendez, uh, Charles Steepney of Earth, Wind and Fire. Yeah. When, when they started to, to get into the song, you know, uh, Rock, Templeton, Todd Templeton there, um, when they started getting the song, they think of the song as a whole, yeah, not just for one instrument. So, yeah. I, I, I'm That's just true. thankful with, yeah, I'm just thankful with, with all of that, that available info and that available education, um, access to that information. I can separate uh, my, my artist uh, personas in, in different, you know, different profiles, like, Okay, the, uh, you don't have to do guitar. Sometimes I would work on a guitar part and I would be asking some of my friends, do you really uh -huh. need a guitar part in here? Oh, okay. <laughs> Which right, is right. strange coming yeah. from a guitar player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So I'd say song first, song first. You know, we learned a lot together on, on, on this song. And I, I just think what yeah. you produce is, is just incredible in the, in the guitar section. So, so Beto, what are the elements of, of classical, classical guitar that has become infused into bossa nova and probably a lot of other genre and even some other genre of jazz is the rubato improvised intro. And I can't say enough about what you did with the first eight bars of this song. It was truly inspired. I mean, I just told you, Beto, here's this eight bars. There's no time. Yeah. Uh, you just do whatever, however the spirit moves you. And I was kind of wondering what what that was like for you coming up with that rubato improvised intro. Oh, thank you, thank you for for bringing that up. Well, I was uh, I was uh, on the track for a long time, right? And well, the first thing that I got that I was really looking into not just was not just the no, notes and the melody, I was looking into the lyrics. And as I was reading the lyrics, it was just so amazing. It's poignant. It's bittersweet. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah it's sort of a sad but song. You're right. It is really a sad song. And I wanted to capture that. But at the outro part, you know, the, the lyrics have started to become more positive, but more like moving on and that, you know, life happens mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. You know, everything's got to happen. So we just exactly. got to move on. So I was in that frame of mind. And then at the same time, I was looking that everything of that has got to fit in eight bars. Right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> An eight bars robot of thing. So I was trying to pull uh, every every little thing I got in my, my nifty pocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was, I was thinking of three things. I was thinking of staying true to the lyrics, which was bittersweet. Mm -hmm. um, it is moving. It's it's not yet there, but it is moving, right? Yeah. It it is moving positively. The pain was there, but it not yet there, but it is in yeah. the process. So I was I was looking for this word, and I think the word that was searching. You were still searching for one thing, and when I played that Roboto intro, I didn't have any pre-planned ideas of how wow. it's going to end. Right. I didn't have any pre-planned ideas of how I'm going to twist the harmony 
And then that's, I think that's where the skill and the technique comes in. That's, that's uh, deep in the pocket. So I was thinking of that, that, um, that idea of, of that vibe, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I was also having this mental template of what I wanted to sound like from, from the technique point of view. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking more of the Lee Rittenar etudes that he oh. does with foreplay. Oh, okay. Th yeah. The other sudden twist. And then uh, it becomes surprising. I really love Steve Howe of Yes. Mm. Oh. So, yeah. So Steve Howe plays uh, steel string guitar and does a solo, uh -huh. albeit in a prog rock band. So yeah. I was thinking of these two guys, if I can just, you know, grab a bit of what they have, just yeah, 2% yeah. of what they have and fit it in this eight bars, then I'll be good. I'll be good. It's like catching <laughs> lightning it, in a bottle, right? It's amazing. Right, right. So yeah. I just give it a go. And I, I'm really glad you guys like that one. And it, for me, um, just in my, my heart, it touches my heart with a sort of a flamenco feel. feels like I could be sitting in a little tiny club in Spain waiting for a flamenco dancer to come out with this intro. It's just exquisite. It's really, really nice. So Thank very inspired you. work there. <laughs> okay, now there it goes. That was my dog. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. So, I, so the other thing is um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the improvised guitar solo. Now this, you know, the classic jazz solo contains some of the most creative expression from any guitarist or, or from any soloing artist. Um, but I was wondering what it was like for you when we tasked you with, with the improvised solo. I mean, um, did you spend some time actually arranging a solo part or did you just step up to the mic and start playing and let it go where it will? Because I know that uh, certainly on the stage, um, improvising a solo is something that you just do right there. But I have right, seen right. some artists, even musicians that I've worked with, that will actually arrange something on a chart and then they will read it when they're recording. So oh, what was that like for you when you were doing your uh, the solo part? Okay, well, uh, for me, I did, well, I, I think I did a lot of takes in that one. But um, as I moved on from one uh, one take, this is how the process went for me, and I think it works for me. I would go for gut feel on the first on the first take, and then I would listen to it, and I'll be starting to look at interesting things. Are there build ups? Are there ups and are there downs? You know, from point A to point B, like, and I would listen to the, that initial draft that I did because I would always think you got to play first from the heart and then start rewriting it with your mind. You know, Forrester. Mm -hmm. Finding Forrester, yeah. the movie, I remember oh, that yeah? one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Write the draft with your heart and then rewrite it with your mind. So, yeah, I think that stuck on me. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so I did that draft and then I would look for interesting things. Am I moving somewhere? Am I, am I stalling in here? Is it necessary to move up to speed at this point? So, mm -hmm. so, so those things come in later. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those things come in later. But I always go for a gut feel. It's like, if you know the theory, you know the chords, then you might yeah. as well play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was yeah. just beautiful, and you uh, from start to finish, from the rubato intro all the way to the end of the song, you were playing all the rhythm chords, and then yes. and then you got a chance in in a completely separate take to lay down the the improvised um, solo, and and that was really beautiful. And and the, the way that I've worked with a, a lot of uh, musicians on these five hundred jazz songs in the past is we'll start out with guitar. But Tony Song, we did an awful lot of work yeah, with on yeah, our first yeah. three albums. But you you just have the the same kind of feel. It's amazing. And um, yeah, I think that might put a lot of pressure on a guitarist saying, You're you're first. And everybody is gonna gonna be adding on their their takes oh, yeah. on top of yours. Right, right. There could oh, yeah. be a little anxiety there. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, I gotta oh, yeah. play so, something. I now. guess <laughs> yeah. the pressure's I on. I was like, you know, you, you you become so overly analytical about that. They're gonna, yeah. gonna hear this squeak. They're gonna hear this squeak. They're <laughs> definitely gonna hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't but hear any good. dog barking, so that was good. Oh, okay, <laughs> that was good. But I think that this, yeah. I just uh, this just came to mind as we were talking about bossa nova, and, yeah. and of course we know the like traditional Brazilian music is all about Brazil and beaches mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. And I think oh, the Philippines has a lot of great beaches, mm -hmm. yeah. so I think the you know the underlying feel is. Mm -hmm. You know, music yeah. becomes universal. You don't exactly get it in words, but you know, you get the feel of the waves and the sand and yeah. all that. You yeah, have so a lot I of guess. inspiration all around you, don't you? Right. Yeah. It's uh it's it's within reach athlete. Like, well, I want to hear some new bosses from you, Beto. So, <laughs> sure, <laughs> no pressure. Sure. So I the think. last question I have for you, my friend, is um 
Well, Nancy Brew, like I said, um, I, I started hearing Nancy Brew when we would go to these WJMX uh, broadcasts and be in the yeah. chat room. You've got some amazing music. And of course, one of my favorite uh, numbers is Black Coffee. Um, so the question is, what's Nancy Brew working on lately? Um, studio sessions or show events or uh, anything that you'd like to tell tell the audience about? All right. So uh, the band, um, well, after Africa, after the pandemic, it's just this month that we got a regular gig, a weekly gig, finally. Wow. You know, after yeah, after those two years, you know, two years That's of nice. Yeah, we did we did play uh, I think we, we did play a lot of FB live sessions, but nothing really beats, you know, getting back to the audience yeah. and playing together. So I think it's it's becoming more normal right here, uh right now from where we are. So Nancy Brew is still up with, uh, we're up with one jazz kind of festival on the October, this October. And we have a regular gig uh, every Thursday set in a newly opened um, uh, place that's near the uh, the uh, uh, local airport that we are, from where we are oh, here. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's every Thursday. And we have, uh, well, life happens to say, like, that we've got four busy folks coming together. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah. Um, we're trying our best to like really finish a lot of unrecorded original material Uh and yeah, put it up also on Spotify. But um, basically right now it's, it's all about um, uh, all those uh, um, corporate gigs. I think we Mm -hmm. got, you know, birthdays and all of that, that stuff. And yeah, that's the interesting part of the band because the band initially has got this jazzy, um underpinnings yeah. when we do our originals yeah but when we do corporate oh man we play everything from modern english to the beatles to wow you know get the party going you too you have quite <laughs> a big is, repertoire yeah it is a <laughs> wide repertoire but you know we enjoy doing that one so so the guys have been busy also uh-huh. um uh, yeah all, all the uh all of us are have different careers we work mm-hmm. sure uh, we work from different uh but at the same time, we try try our best to find time to get together and finish all the original stuff we got. Phenomenal! That's great to hear that you're because getting for for me with Five Hundred Jazz, getting shows show gigs is the hardest thing. And it sounds like you guys that comes really easy to you. I mean, you're in residence on a weekly basis. That's that's really superb. But I got to ask you, I rem, I'm reminded of a song by Pink Floyd, uh, "Have a Cigar." Where there's this oh, yeah. line in there, which one's pink? So I got to ask you, which one is Nancy, or where's Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I got to gather enough uh, urban <laughs> of status so that it becomes an urban legend, an urban myth. That's and right. Then disclose where Nancy is. <laughs> exactly. You got to come up with some sort of a story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. well, uh, well, for the record, Nancy Bruatley was was one of my uh, one of our marketing ploys there well from my i would admit it was from my mind <laughs> mm-hmm. from my mind back then because it was roughly based on nancy drew oh oh that's yeah, cool the, great play yeah, on words the the, uh-huh. the detective uh, yeah. book that flick you know teenagers yeah. used to have in the 80s and yeah, the 70s yeah. and then i think there was a there was a time when uh, they had a movie you know a film uh-huh. redo of that but i didn't think i think it you know it bombed <laughs> but uh, yeah what i was i was going after was i was having this uh i was trying to find a hook a recall for uh-huh. those a, a local local um uh, a local market over here mm-hmm. but then it we just stuck to it uh, nobody even remembers who nancy brew is <laughs> so, yeah but we stuck with it but everybody loves brewed coffee so let's yeah let's, it's a super cool name and the, the graphic and, you know, seeing it in your logo, but also you got some, some great friends like Nick led that takes a yeah. lot of your photos yes. and some of the video. I don't know if he's taking the video too, but you have some yeah, beautiful did. video and photos out there. Yeah. Thank you. And, and yeah, well, it's nice if, uh, if this one makes it Nick, thank you very much. Nick was the, among the very first guys who believed uh-huh. uh, in the band when he first yeah. heard us, you know, and, Nick is not just any photographer. I, I think I, I got to mention this one, John, because Nick was part of the uh, the birth of the jazz awareness in this island. Oh, my God. Right, right. Oh, wow. Because um, uh, the, the first FM radio station was here in Baholod City, uh-huh. actually in Western Visayas. That's one part of the Visayas region. Yeah. And then when they started operating, it was Nick 
with uh, a few friends. There was George, there was Jerry, there was Bob. They got the slot from that FM station and they played Jazz Sundays. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And they were hauling all these LPs from the yeah. states. <laughs> yeah. Oh from the God. states, right. So they were part. I always I always give props to them when I can because if not for their slots, I never heard anything yeah. about jazz, you know. So wow. yeah, I was listening to to a lot of Earl Clue. I was listening to a yeah. lot of yeah, you know, the 70s guys. Yeah, sure. Uh, Chico Hamilton. They would yep. play that. You know, play that in, in the middle of the afternoon, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny because my wife went to college in the Philippines in, in Manila and um when she came back, she brought a, she gave me this cassette and it was, I think she met some guy that was a DJ and he put together a lot of songs, songs that I had heard on the radio, but other musicians that I'd never heard of before. Like you said, Earl Clue, there was some Willie Bobo. There was, it was oh, just yeah. amazing. This guy was, yeah. he had sort of more of a jazz feel to his likings in his DJ gig. And so <laughs> this tape, I think that she gave me inspired me because I didn't really start playing with, uh, well, enjoying jazz until like 1980. But I mean, oh. the 70s, it was all the rock and roll that you know so well that I've seen you playing so well. And, yeah. um, and you know that, that we both love Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits. Yes, so. <laughs> of course. And we both love Steely Dan. Yeah. And oh, God. God, <laughs> we love the guys. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Well, God, Beto, it's been phenomenal talking to you. And uh, I just can't wait mm -hmm. to, uh, to see how this thing goes on September the 16th. So, yes, yes. And I would really love to, uh, to get to work with you again sometime. So. Sure, sure. Same sentiments here, my friend. Um, again, uh, thank you. And thank you also, David, and the rest of the guys for giving a, uh, a chance and a shot at this project. And I'm really excited. I know. I know everybody gave their best on that one. And Absolutely. personally, John, thank you for making me a part of, you know, birthing your idea. That was, that's pleasure. your song, man. It was that's an honor, Beto. Well, God bless you, my friend. God and I hope you, you have man. a wonderful day there. And uh, thanks for, for taking the time to talk to 500 Jazz today. Crossing the Sea comes to your favorite music sites on September the 16th. Or you can just visit our website at 510jazz.com slash listen. 